What's up all you figure freaks, Ginger Vita 75 coming at you with a late night action figure review. Tonight we're doing Legends of Lucha Libre, Fanaticos, Wave 2, Vampiro. I was just wandering in GameStop, I didn't even know this guy was uh, out, I didn't, I didn't know he existed. And uh, I was just kind of wandering around, I was like, oh yeah, and usually I don't give these figures a second look, at least I didn't for the first wave. I think that came with a Conan, but he was all luchated out or whatever. And uh, I was like, wait, kind of scoped that and was like, Vampiro? That doesn't look like Vampiro. And lo and behold, it is. It is a very, very young Vampiro. So anyways, let's look at the box here. Got the nice profile picture on the card. I was lucky enough to get a nice, very nice card. Kind of hesitant to open it, but I'm, don't worry, guys. I'm gonna shred this thing open and check it out. We got the nice uh, window box there. It looks very solid. I like the design. Now that I kind of stare at it a bit. Around the back here, we got a picture of the figure. We got his profile, a little stat sheet. Coming in at six foot two. Weighing 250 pounds from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Debut in 1985. I believe he was like 16 or 17 years old. He was really young when he got his start up there in Canada. Finishing move is Nail in the Coffin. And then you got the rest of the wave down here. You got uh, Ultimo Dragon, Hio del Perro Guayo, who actually I think he died in the ring, and then Black Taurus. So yeah. I might pick up this guy. All these guys look pretty cool. They did have an Ultimo Dragon there, but I was like, eh. I don't know too much about him. I'm not really a, a Lucha guy. You know, I'm, Rey Mysterio's cool. Uh, some of those other guys are cool. I'm just not that into it. Anyway. So this uh, outfit reflects when he was down in Mexico, I believe. Um, he, I remember he was down there, he had a feud with Conan, and then many years later he made it to WCW, I think it was like 98, 99, where he formed a uh, stable with Raven and the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> And he had like little rivalries with uh, Eddie Guerrero, Dr. Death, Steve Williams. And then I think in 2001, 2002, whenever it was that WWF acquired WCW, he was told that his services would no longer be needed and he was fired. So, but he's done plenty more. He's been kind of in the game ever since. Now I think he's with NWA, which is Billy Corrigan's wrestling company. So yeah, let's tear this thing open. We'll check him out outside the box. All right, here we got him outside the box, looking pretty good. I would say this figure is somewhere kind of in between uh, basic Mattel as and a Jazzwares. It's got a lot of properties of the Jazzwares AEW line. Um, everything pops off from his waist to his head to his hands. Uh, and it's like all ball joints, but he looks so good. And if you're like, who the heck is Vampiro? Um, maybe you might remember like when he was with WCW, he worked with like Sting and uh, a couple other people. I'll, I'll bring uh, uh, some other figures to show who he worked with in comparisons. But um, he had the white painted face as well. And it was like, I don't know, like if he was copying Sting or what the deal was, but he went up against him, I think, and he also teamed with him. So um, I noticed that some of these, uh, the pieces, like the limbs kind of fall off. So it's not super high quality, but, uh, excuse, excuse me, quality, it's not high quality, really. It's not a bad figure, but when the, uh, the wrists are popping off at the elbow, Right after you open it, you gotta kinda wonder, right? So let's go through the articulation here. And the paint apps, um, really nice looking figure, really. Um, I like the face, like the, two, the 
painted tears running down out of his eyes or whatever that is. Face sculpt is pretty good. And then you got these very tight braids, which are multicolored. There's some black, there's kind of some red brushed in there. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there you go. And it's like... Oh. Now he's got a little shaved head underneath there. That's pretty neat. And then you got the tattoos on the chest. Damn, that stuff has got to be a bitch to put on there. On the shoulder over here and the arm. As far as articulation goes, we got the head. Pretty good movement. Swivel, turns all the way around. Will pop off pretty easily. Um, got this here, the swivel on the shoulder. Elbow. I want to have this thing pop out, but just single jointed, no pins. Probably why this thing pops out, but yeah, this thing pops out easily. Here, I'll show you. Boink. Yeah. What's up with that? Got the uh, the jerk off movement on the hands and wrist. Spins around, and then no ab crunch, but you got a nice swivel and pivot down at the waist and watch this, it pops off as well. I guess that's so you can mix and match, but that's cool. You can kind of do cool little poses this way. It's not too hindered, you know. I don't know if you're gonna be able to maximize the, the poses like you can with elites and ultimates. Probably do a little bit better than like a basic. Legs pop out like this, so you can do the splits. Goes up to about there. It is single jointed at the knee and it is pinned. So you can't get too much movement there. It's about a, yeah. Not too far. You got a, a boot cut there. That is loose. Now that the ankles of the pivot. Swivel. That is some loose, loosey goosey stuff down there, so. Not super high quality figure, but I would say it's good enough, you know, if you're just gonna be displaying it. I like the gear, I like the look. Um It works for me. You know, I'm just gonna put it on the shelf with the rest of the boys and girls. And uh, I'm happy that I have a Vampiro. I might pick up another one and maybe uh, paint his face, cut his hair. I don't know. It's up to me, right? We're gonna go do some comparisons next. Alrighty, some comparisons. We're gonna bring in the AEW Sting. We did the work with. I think Sting is like 6'2, 6'3. He is on a stand. And uh, Vampiro comes in at about 6'2, so let's we're gonna put him on there. Uh, it works. Good enough. I don't know. Sometimes they get the scale all wrong and it kind of disturbs me in weird ways. But, anyways, oh, I forgot to mention nipples. Good job, boss fight. So, there we go. We got Sting. Some 
the people he did work with. We'll throw in a little Eddie Guerrero. I'm your pappy. Bleach hair. these guys these are for the jazz wares and they're like big humongous like hexagon shaped holes on the bottom of their feet so a little bit different we got Rey Mysterio wrestled him as well And back here, in you know, a candy ass Rudy Poop. This is the ultimate. So he looks pretty good next to other figures, you know. It doesn't like really stand out too much. You could pose this guy with your elites or your jazz wares. Rick Steiner, the dog-faced gremlin. He was my last review. Love this figure. It's a great figure. Oh, is this bandana? No, no it's not. Boom. And finally... My favorite wrestler. Mr. Perfect. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed the review, guys. Um, I don't know. I'm going to do some more reviews coming up. I'm going to take you over here. Check this out. So, I got these guys lined up. What do you guys want to see? Do you want to see Ultimate Rock? Million Dollar Man? Greg the Hammer Valentine? Braun Breaker? Tori Wilson? Or some G.I. Joes? We got Low Light, we got Vipra, and we got Tiger Force Flint. So I don't know, let me know down in the comments what do you want to see next. Joes, wrestlers, uh, any of these individual ones, these guys are on deck. And so if you got a, any kind of preference, let me know. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching, guys. I truly appreciate it. Stay tuned. We'll have more reviews coming up. Later.